Tesla CEO Elon Musk is in China this week, his first trip in three years to visit Tesla's Shanghai plant and meet with government officials. And J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon uh, takes the stage at his uh, bank's China summit today. He's calling for uh, real engagement between policymakers in Washington and Beijing instead of uh, just sitting across, in his words, sitting across the Pacific yelling at each other. For more on what CEOs and Beijing officials want from each other, let's bring in uh, Jim McGregor, APCO Worldwide uh, Greater China Chairman. I don't know what, when the last time uh, we saw you, Jim. I, it was pre-balloon, I think, pre-balloon gate. Um, you know, we've got, we've got lots of concerns. You know, the, the, the country, China, is obviously uh, front and center in terms of, of, of trying to further its own interests, like we do, too. But whether buying farmland around a lot of our, you know, defense uh, facilities, that some of this is troubling. But I don't see how disengagement, they're going to do it either way. We, we, we need to be over there, don't we? In, in, at least in terms of, for example, Tesla or Apple or, or J.P. Morgan. Yeah, well, let's start out um, with Elon Musk. I think this is his, if you look at him coming to China now, it's kind of his somebody likes me tour. You know, he's not the most popular guy around the world, but in China, he's revered. People on the Internet um, uh, are telling him a global idol. He's looked at as kind of a, a fun version of Einstein by people. Uh, when he met with Foreign Minister Chin Gong on Tuesday, um, the Foreign Ministry came out and said that Elon Musk described U.S. and China as co-joined twins, and he did not want them to be coupled. He himself has made no public statements that I've seen uh, during his time in China. But he, uh, you know, he wants to expand there, and China loves him because he brought in the, the advanced uh, supply chain for electric vehicles that their companies are now benefiting from. So he's, he's been very helpful to China. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see how long, if his market share will last for many, many years or if, if this is his best time. We don't know yet. Um, for Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan, this is kind of their redemption tour. You'll remember in 2021, uh, Jamie Dimon said that his bank would outlast the Communist Party. You can imagine that was not well taken by the, by the, by the party. This conference is a big deal because it's the first one in many years, in three years. But um, it's also um, not the most high profile. There's only a couple of American CEOs there. A lot of the people there are regional heads and analysts and lawyers, et cetera. So you don't have a big turnout. Kissinger, of course, will be speaking uh, virtually and some others. But um, this is not a whole lot of CEOs returning to China, even though they are starting to, to, to come in. But, you know, let's look at the tone of the conference. This is, this is Thursday's agenda. These are some of the, the events. Ready for renewal, China macro outlook. Building re resilience in China's healthcare system vast quantitative opportunities for in the China A share market. So, um, you know, they're working, he's working to put a very positive spin on, on China. At the same time, and this is what all CEOs are doing, you're walking a very fine line between Brussels, Beijing, and Washington, D.C., and, and, and trying to get through this minefield. And, and, and Jamie Dimon has been very uh, adept in, in, in his wording. At yeah, least but... he said, we're, we're here for the citizens of the country in the good times and bad. Right. But, Jim, he also, I, I listened to an interview he gave to Bloomberg, and he also was pretty outspoken, I think more so than any of the other CEOs you point to, whether that be Elon Musk or Tim Cook or beyond. I mean, he said, these were his words on this, I am an American patriot. He said, I am a red-blooded, full-throated capitalist. And he also said that he would always choose national defense first, being an American patriot. If, if his country tells him to do ABC, he said he will. So that, to me, well, is, like, that was more outspoken than I've heard from anybody else. Yeah, well, he, you know, they're, they're all trying to figure out how to walk this line. And, you know, you say, you, you say, you say th you're looking back at Washington the whole time you're in Beijing on what you say. But you're also looking at, uh, you know, the uh, Zhongnanhai, the Chinese leadership, and you're trying to say positive things about both and maintain your integrity and your, your, your positioning in both countries. It's, it's not easy, but everybody's doing this right now. I mean, we, it, it, he makes a point. Yeah, I'm here for the citizens of China. We're all, you know, we want to, for our own self-interest, too, sell into that market. We, we want to help. But then again, it, the, the, some of the stuff the CCP continues to do is just totally inexcusable. And we've got all our companies 
You know, we got Disney in Florida doesn't like, you know, a, a duly passed law and it squawks about that. It says nothing about Uyghurs. So, I mean, it, it, it's there's a lot of hypocrisy, plenty to go around, uh, Jim, in terms of China. Well, you know, the big the big issue here is that business has gone from being the bridge between China and the U.S. to being the battleground in many cases, especially in technology. Right. And 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 um, CEOs are trying to get their head around this. Right. And you're right. Those ra those raids that happened have also um, scared a, a lot. Of, you know, there's a number of CEOs that have told me they're 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 afraid to go to China. Members yeah. of Congress a couple of weeks ago I was talking to were saying the same thing. So you got yeah. this China China courting people right. who are also scaring them.